untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Historic Brawl Games video. Today we're taking a look at a 5 color gates deck as voted on by my supporters on Patreon as we await the upcoming Kamigawa release. And surprise surprise, we're actually playing a Tybalt's Trickery Cultivator Colossus meme deck, but I made sure to make it budget friendly by not including any rare dual lands, so it should be pretty easy to put together. And the way it works is pretty simple. We're playing the first sliver as our commander, a 5 mana 7 7 with cascade, meaning that when we cast it, we exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non land card that costs less, and then we get to cast that card without paying its mana cost. And the only non land card in our deck that costs less than our commander is Tibble's Trickery. And the way Cascade works is we resolve the Cascade trigger before the actual spell resolves. So as we get to cast Tibble's Trickery for free, the first sliver is still waiting on the stack, and then we can counter it using Tibble's Trickery, and then choose one, two, or three at random, mill that many cards, and then we get to exile cards from the top of our library until we exile a non land card with a different name from the countered spell, and then we get to cast that card without paying its mana cost, and the only non-land card that's left in our deck that we can hit with Tybalt's Trickery is going to be Cultivator Colossus, a 7 mana star star with Trample, whose power and toughness are each equal to the number of lands we control, and when Colossus enters a battlefield, we may put a land card from our hand onto the battlefield tapped, and if we do, we get to draw a card and repeat this process. And given that the remainder of our deck is all lands, we can essentially repeat this process however many times we want, and putting a ton of lands in play, eventually ending up with a 90 plus powered Cultivator Colossus that can end the game on the following turn. But if the opponent does happen to have an answer to Cultivator Colossus, there is still a backup plan, which is a Maze's End as an alternate win condition. A land that enters battlefield tapped only makes colorless mana, so not helpful for casting our commander, but we can pay 3 mana, tap it, and return it to our hand to search our library for a gate card, put it onto the battlefield, and then if we control 10 or more gates with different names, we win the game. And because Cultivator Colossus can put all those gates in play, we can simply activate Maze's Ascent even in our upkeep. If we're about to maybe mill out and we don't have any cards left in our library, we can still win on our upkeep using Maze's End. And we do have all 10 gates, as well as one copy of Gateway Plaza, which we won't be able to put in play using Cultivator Colossus, because we won't have the one mana to pay for it if we combo off on turn 5, but we can simply keep Gateway Plaza in hand, put other lands in play, and then if needed we can still play Gateway Plaza, and then activate Maze's End afterwards to win the game. So even if we happen to mill one of our gates with Tybalt's Trickery, which is one of the fail cases if we mill a gate or happen to mill our Cultivator Colossus, then we're in trouble. And then of course counter spells are another easy way to beat this deck by just countering the key cards. And then the rest of our mana base is very budget friendly, as I mentioned, only common and uncommon lands. We do have to play quite a few basics, so there might be a scenario where we don't have all five colors to cast the first liver, which is a downside of the budget friendly mana base. We do also have some lands that gain life when they enter the battlefield. We've got the entire cycle of uh, dual lands that gain one life when they enter. Then I've also added Colony Garden to make an 01 plant token to maybe help us chum block after we put Cultivator Colossus into play to maybe survive that one extra turn. And then we've got plenty of five color lands, some of which can also gain one life, like the Crypt of the Eternals. We've got the Radiant Fountain to gain two life, also not helpful for casting first liver, but another value land we can maybe hit with Cultivator Colossus. So I try to squeeze as much mana fixing and value lands into the mana base as possible, and then it's very budget friendly. We only need three mythics between first sliver Cultivator Colossus Mazes End and one rare in Tibble's Trickery, and the rest is all commons and uncommons. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Alright, we're on the play, facing Gishoth, Sun's Avatar, so Naya, Dinosaur, Ramp. And luckily we're on the play, otherwise we could definitely fall behind. And we've got a fine opening hand here. Couple ways to gain life as well, so we'll play those first. And then important to have at least one untapped land. So we can cast our first liver on turn 5.
There's no need to put uh, guild gates in play first, since we can always put those in play with Cultivator Colossus later. Alright, Kinjali Scholar to discount dinosaurs. Ferocidon, I guess, prevents us from gaining life, so glad we played those gain lines first. And then... What color are we missing? Red, perhaps? And then we should be able to combo next turn. So unless your opponent has a mana tithe here, they shouldn't be able to stop our combo. We didn't mill anything important, and it's time to combo off. And we'll try and keep track of our gates here as we play them, so we don't have to go back and count. So one gate in play. One of the advantages of playing a budget-friendly version as opposed to the full-on build is that uh, we don't have all those dual lands that we have to pay to life or let come into play tapped, which otherwise gives you one additional click every time. So it makes it a little bit faster to combo. So I believe we still only have the one gate. Wouldn't be able to gain life because of Ferocidon. And yeah, it's important that we find the Mazes and alternate win condition plus enough gates. Otherwise, there's a chance the opponent can answer Colossus and still kill us some other way. Can look at the Colossus power and toughness to keep track of how many cards we've already seen. There's gate number two, gate number three, gate number four, gate number five, Maze's End, gate number six, gate number seven, they were all grouped up. And there's another gate. So one more gate and then uh, there we go. That should be good enough. So now we can just activate Mesa's End to win the game next turn. And 79 power and toughness should be enough. Can put a stop on upkeep just in case, but... 10 cards remaining, so no real risk of decking. I guess if we're up against a blue deck, we probably want to make sure we have all those gates in play. Alright, our opponent does not have an answer, and explodes. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Maronars, so probably Rat Tribal with the uh, two mana rats. So we could be in trouble, because that deck can deal a lot of damage very quickly. We're on the draw as well, so probably needed to be on the play to stand a chance. Do I need to mulligan until I find Colony Garden and a bunch of life gain? Maybe? I guess we gain one life here. Could make the difference. Don't want to mulligan too much because we might always draw into the combo pieces and then we'll have to throw that back as well. Turn to Mindstone. Okay, so next turn they can double rat. It's gonna be Herald's Horn into a rat, and then the turn after they can uh, play Marinar plus some other stuff. I'm gonna play as many rat lands as possible to discourage my opponent from overextending into a potential sweeper. If 
Vanquisher's Banner to draw more cards. Happy to see that. Opponent is going for slow and steady with card advantage when they should be trying to kill us as quickly as possible. So we might actually have a chance now. So our opponent's unsure whether we're a five color value deck or a combo meme deck. Plays Maronar into a couple more rat colonies. And between all the life gain here that's coming up, we should be able to survive. There's a chance they can kill Colossus, but there's still Maze's end, so... I guess her opponent might be able to play enough rats, plus the fear from Maronar that they can still actually attack for lethal here. So... We'll see. We have to go through the entire combo to find out, so that's gate number three. Maronar making more rats also increases all the rat colonies' power. So the more I think about it, the more I feel like our opponent's just gonna kill us still. Just gotta hope they have a bunch of lands in hand and don't draw into more rats. And then I probably have to go through the entire deck to gain as much life as possible. The plant token doesn't help when their rats have fear. So our opponent doesn't have to play very many rats before Marinar activating becomes lethal. This is where it would be useful to have a reveal your hand feature to your opponent. So my opponent could show me they have like three rat colonies in hand, which Three additional rats, rat colony goes up to eight power, activate Maronar, and that should be more than enough, even if we gain ten life here. We won't be playing the gateway plaza. So yeah, if we were on the play, we actually might have had a chance, but as it is, I feel like... Uh, we're still gonna succumb to the very scary rat colonies. Six cards left. And I didn't count how many gates I had, because I'm gonna go for my entire deck here. Just in case I'm missing a point of life gain. And then uh, that should be enough. Alright, we're at 30. Let's see if that's enough. Harold's Horn finds Rat Colony. That's bad news. So our opponent can play up to 6 rats here. And then I should put a stop on upkeep to activate Mazes End, just in case my last card in library is a gate that I missed earlier. Although, while we wait, I guess we could count our gates. It's a fun uh, activity. So... It's one gate. Two gates. Three, four, five, and all right. Looks like our opponent concedes, and we got there. On to the next one. All right, we're on the draw, facing Chandra, Awakened Inferno. So hopefully it's a pretty controlling deck that doesn't apply a lot of early pressure. So we can uh, have enough time to combo off. Turn 2 we can play Plaza and pay the 1. Ooh, a turn 2 Magda is scary. Applies pressure and ramps the opponents. Do a few ways to gain life. I guess just to 1 life. 
don't want to play Crypt since it doesn't actually help us cast a turn 5 first liver. It's mainly here to eventually gain one life when we're comboing off. Turn 3 Leyline Tyrants. Not what we wanted to see at all. Do have an untapped land at least now to combo on turn 5. Alright, luckily not too scary of a turn here. Opponent attacks. We're at 12. And we should be able to gain quite a bit of life off Cultivator Colossus. Let's go for it. We did mill one gate, but uh, that shouldn't be too much of a problem. Since we have 11 gates total as an alternate win condition, Red's also going to have a hard time actually killing Cultivator Colossus. And our opponent scoops it up. Sweet, on to the next one. All right, we're on the play, facing the first sliver, so if it's the mirror match somehow, being on the play is incredibly important. And if it's sliver tribal, hopefully we're fast enough to kill the opponent before they assemble a lethal army of slivers. And our mana should be just fine here. Good all the mana fixing we need. See the world tree. Not the best combo with the uh, Cultivator Colossus combo, so it makes it more likely that they're just a five color sliver or maybe good stuff deck. And uh, just gotta watch out for a potential counter spell, I guess. So ideally, our opponent taps out. If they do not. I think we still go for it, because if it is somehow with a mirror match, I guess World Tree doesn't fix their mana yet. But it does make green, so they might still be able to combo on turn 5. So we want to combo first. We did mill Gateway Plaza, but that still leaves 10 gates for Mace's end. And our opponent scoops it up. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Turgrid, God of Fright. So a discard-heavy deck. Well, if they have targeted discard like Inquisition and Thoughtseize, they're gonna see a handful of lands. So that's not gonna accomplish much. Our mana looks good, no combo pieces in hand. That's always terrifying if you draw Tibble's Trickery or Cultivator Colossus, then the deck kind of falls apart. Sometimes you can still hard cast Colossus to get there, but it's incredibly slow, of course, without any ramp. Experts can have a look and take my Stone Quarry, sure. Cold Steel Heart, that's fine. So the opponent's deck is likely to have an answer to my huge Colossus, so the alternate win condition of Maze's End is certainly gonna come in handy. If they play Turgrid, that would be fine. It's gonna be Senchmore Witch.
trickery, and then hopefully we don't mill Colossus here, and then we should be good. Alright, didn't mill any gates either, so that's nice. So we have one gate in place, so we'll start keeping track. Don't expect my opponent to concede, since they probably have removal here. So we'll have to go for the combo. I recommend using both the mouse and the spacebar to make this faster. That's gate number two. No point in playing Rupture Spire since we can't pay the one. So our opponent would need both land destruction for Maze's Ends as well as removal for Colossus, which is unlikely, but not impossible. Field of Ruin into a 2-mana spot removal spell would do it. Colony Garden protects Colossus from a sacrifice effect as well. So still only two gates in play. That's number three. There's our Mesa's End. We'll keep the Thriving Lands for last since those take an additional click. And we can look at the Colossus Power and Toughness to figure out how many lands we've already seen. That was gate number four. Should have named Crab, but want to make this go by quickly. That's gate number five. Gate number six. So once we get to nine gates we can stop because we can uh, just fetch up the last one. That's gate number seven. Gate number eight. Don't want to play the gateway plaza since we can't pay for it. And there we go. All right, that's enough. Gain a bunch of life, make that plant token. Still two cards left in library. And we can put a stop on upkeep in case we need to activate Mesa Sense to prevent decking. So we'll see how our opponent deals with our 86-86. We can also replay the first liver pretty easily now, for what it's worth. And our opponent concedes, alright, I guess Mesa's end was not needed after all. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play, facing Ugin, the ineffable, so a colorless ramp deck. And yeah, our hand seems fine. Got all colors we need. And no combo pieces, which is important too. And let's start gaining some life. Thriving Heath can name green. And don't expect a colorless deck to have too much interaction necessarily. So, should be able to combo off. Also don't expect them to be particularly aggressive. So unless they have removal for Colossus and land destruction, we should be in the clear. Arcane Signet actually doesn't work in a colorless deck since their commander doesn't have any colors. So probably not the best inclusion in an Ugin deck. Tibal's Trickery prompts the concession, so another quick one here.
All right, we're on the draw facing the Esper Artifact deck. So there is a chance of counter spells, although we gotta hope our opponent's more of an Artifact Synergy deck. And our hand's fine. We've got all the mana fixing we need. Can gain some life in the process. Sparring Regimen. Learning in uh, Historic Brawl just means discard draw. Since you don't have a sideboard to learn from. Eh, opponent taps out. Gotta hope they tap out again next turn. Mind Stone make a token. And birth. Still one blue mana up. So they could technically still have a wash away. Two mana now. But it's not gonna get better if I wait, so let's go for it and cross our fingers. Alright. Did not mill any gates. Does Colossus resolve? It does. Alright, so we're in the clear. One guild gate already in play, so we can start keeping track. Now our opponent could easily have removal for Colossus, so we have to go for the alternate win condition. Gateway Plaza we will keep in hand, that's gate number two. Gate number three. Gate number four. Also need mazes and still. Gate number five. And we get to spend some quality time with our opponent here. So we're about halfway. Gate number six. Gate number seven. There's Mesa's ends. So two more gates will do. The last couple of gates are hiding. There's one. And still one more. And there we go. That should be enough. Gain some life, make some tokens. And we can always play Gateway Plaza, just in case I miscount it to play an extra gate before activating Mesa's End, unless there's a need to activate it on upkeep. So we've got a 75-75 Colossus, 33 life. So not sure how our opponent gets out of this. Is this a Time Warp? Cathar's Crusade? Alright. So it doesn't look like they have an answer for Colossus. Aha, uh -huh, Conclave Tribunal, that'll work. So we finally get to show off the alternate win condition here. So I'm glad our opponent actually answered Colossus. So we'll draw. And then play the extra gate just in case. Do not want to auto pay with Mesa's End. And then we gotta find Mesa's End, which is quite the chore here. There we go. Pick it up. No gates left. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. So that's why the secondary wing condition is so important. Now, if our opponent had a counter spell instead of removal, we just lose on the spot. 
So the deck is quite effective for being so budget friendly, and we can usually win on turn 6. There's still the problem that a single counterspell from the opponent will put a stop to all our shenanigans, and then if they have any land destruction or ways to mill a couple of our gates, they could also prevent the alternate win condition from Mesa's end, and then a single removal spell for Cultivator Colossus is game over, even though we do have the one additional gate to potentially still save us if one of them gets destroyed. And then there's also the fail case of just drawing one of the combo pieces like Tibal's Trickery or Cultivator Colossus along the way. So those are all problems that are also part of the experience. And of course it does take a while to actually combo off, so it's maybe not the most time efficient deck for getting your dailies completed. But it is pretty fun to play once or twice even if it does get pretty repetitive after a while. But yeah, quite budget friendly, so if you've got those few rares and mythics, why not give it a shot? And of course you can always swap in additional rare dual lands that you already have for some of the weaker lands in the deck. So that's going to do it for this video, but not for today's video, as hopefully I'll be back with some standard action with the new Kamigawa Neon Dynasty. And if you want to be part of the voting process to decide which standard deck I should cover next, make sure to join my Patreon page for as little as $2 a month. You get to vote on the daily poll that decides which deck gets featured on the channel next, as well as access to the various perks like my limited tier lists, if that's of any interest to you. So that's going to do it for this video, want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day! I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.